How the hell is it going? Welcome back to the studio. It is Rich, and today I am practicing more dynamic anatomy in Clip Studio Paint. And I am using the turnip pen. I know, it's basically a G pen. And if you are into anime, manga, and comic book art, and the process of making that art, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, like this video, still a very, very small channel, every little bit helps. And if you don't know, I have a poll over on the community tab. You can go and vote for what I do in the next video. Right now it's between hands and more dynamic anatomy. So go ahead and head over there and vote. Um, I love getting the feedback and I love taking personal requests. What are you guys struggling with? What do you guys want to see more of? What are you guys, what are you guys dying to learn? So um, as you can see here, I, this is a totally random character. Uh, I think I was first going for Shatterstar and he was this character whoever it is has like these claws and he's kind of slashing i was flipping through my uh, x-men kind of encyclopedia book and there's this character called wild child he's basically a little saber tooth and all at the same time i'm looking at joe mad and uh, jeff matsuda comic books and the characters have these huge eyes so these these eyes are a lot bigger than i normally do um but still pretty cool I do like how this image kind of found the final results, how it turned out. Um, and I'm just practicing my process. So, uh, trying to figure out what my new digital style is, what my look is, how I'm going about creating that look. Um, and of course, also dynamic anatomy practice as always. So, and these very angular faces. I love these these Joe Mad angular faces. Not all anime is equivalent, you know. It's just like American comic books. For those of you that follow my channel because of my comic book stuff, um, anime is very different. You know, there's the cutesy stuff, and then there's the chibi, and you know, I would classify a lot of the new newer anime as the cutesy stuff. Um, but my favorite stuff is made by Shinichiro Watanabe, and he did, you know, Cowboy Bebop, and um, Samurai Champloo, Terra in Resonance, uh, Space Dandy, uh, but my all-time favorite has got to be Samurai Champloo. Um, and I don't mean just from Shinichiro Watanabe, I mean period, hands down, overall, just Samurai Champloo is, I think, the greatest of all time. Um, huge influence on my art personally <clears throat> but also lo-fi hip-hop created there come on so anyway I'm trying to incorporate my traditional style into this new digital medium so I'm using a lot of a uh, pencil brush and I'm trying to create tones and hatching and shading and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do that in digital media now of course I can just you know why don't you just do it the way you did it on paper just you know now with the tablet sure I guess I could try to do that but I also want to try to take advantage of of you know the advantages that come with digital digital media while retaining that same you know traditional aesthetic look so I'm I'm trying to find the right balance and take advantage of the digitalness and obviously layers are the biggest biggest um, help when going to digital as well as the undo button but come on so I have these different pencil these different pencils that you can download and clip and this one gives you a much rougher texture as you can see there on the arm and the hand um, and working on dynamic anatomy, I have different, um, God, what am I thinking of? It's not necessarily perspective, but you know, the, the arm and the hand are coming out at you, they're slashing at you, and it's kind of like beyond the foreground, it's the closest thing to you. <clears throat> perspective, I guess, is what I'm thinking of. And this is one of the best ways to create dynamic anatomy. You have the body moving and bending and twisting and contorting in as many ways as possible. And you set up kind of three different levels. There's what's closest to you and then there's kind of like a middle 
ground and then a foreground and a background to this one same figure. So you have this arm and hand that's coming out at you in like the foreground and the middle ground would be the space and torso and then in the background you have that arm that's bent back behind everything. And then of course if you can add some dynamic, um, keep using the word dynamic I know, but if you can add some dramatic, that's what I meant to say, dramatic tones and dramatic shading and lighting, really make a piece pop. And here I am just trying to figure out these brush settings just a little bit more. Um, learning this program as much as I can in the free first month that I have it. I uh, am seriously dedicated to learning this program and getting better with my art. I wake up every day uh, between 4 and, well, 4.30 and I think 5.30. With the exception of a few days this week, I've really just been out of it, and I woke up at like 6, and 6.30. Just uh, still getting over this pandemic thing that I caught. I know I can't say it on YouTube, they'll, they have some automatic machines that do stuff, so I can't say it, but I am officially over it, I think, so... Just got some lingering congestion. Oh, so here's the best part. Highlights. I create a new layer, add some highlights. I'm using a pencil, and it creates this fun texture. And uh, I don't know. This is just the best part of digital. You can create different layers and layer up the tones. And that's really the my process that I figured out. You know, I have my line art on one layer. I have my shadows. Just really just a bunch of pencil shading and uh, hatching on another one and then highlights white pencil on another and doing this I think I can then just lay down some flat colors and it will look look perfectly fine of course that's not true because also what I'm figuring out with my style is that I think I'm going for realistic flesh tones so I have to add in you know uh, pinks and reds around certain spots where there's more blood and yellow and I mean if you if you've seen some of my other more recent videos on coloring the face you see that there's a bunch of different tones just in a face so and I don't know how that applies to like the rest of the body I haven't figured that out yet but I'm probably not gonna go that far into detail with my style I think you know I'm figuring out the hair here, and this piece was just a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I didn't have too much pressure on myself to be absolutely, totally correct. It was just a lot of exploration and having fun with it, so. <clears throat> and I love how this piece looked at the end when I added a graphic blank orange background and these white streaks showing a lot of movement and fast motion with the hand. It's really fun. If you guys haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Like this video if you learned something, and if you want to see more, like I said, I'm going to be doing hands. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing hands next. Looks like it's going that way with the poll, but go ahead and vote. I'm going to be trying to upload even more than twice a week. And here's the final image. But I'm going to be trying to upload even more than twice a week. Right now I'm doing Tuesdays and Fridays. Look for a third one. Love you guys. See you around.